Physicist Jared Ran, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Friday, July 8, 2022, after 3 p.m. Eastern. We'll be having a reverse aging health call tonight at 9 p.m. Follow your bliss, and doors will open where there were no doors before. Joseph Campbell. Oftentimes people wonder why they suffer. The main reason why we suffer in this life is that we are trying to have a different experience than the one that is happening now. Whenever we are not allowing a feeling, a thought, or experience to flow through our body-mind, we are creating a subtle control around it and resistance to it by not giving an experience space or permission to be experienced we are judging it and cutting off the circulation of the wisdom it is attempting to offer us anytime we try to control suppress or overmanage an experience that the all-intelligent universe is offering us, we are missing the point. The moment we let go of control and allow for each life experience to show up as it is, we can actually enjoy every single experience that life provides, even the challenging ones. This approach to life enables us to fully be alive so we can feel, see, and experience that there is a divine, all-loving presence existing within everyone and everything. No matter what our situation is in this life, no matter how stuck you think you are or how profound your pain is, you have the power to shift it completely right now. This power is in the first learning how to allow for it. By allowing a negative feeling full permission to be experienced in its totality, it relinquishes its grip upon you. This means allowing it to be here now 100%, not 99.99%. That tiny 0.01% means that your ego mind is not really letting go and fully trusting this magical, all-intelligent universe knows what it's doing. The moment you truly let go and reach 100% allowing, your suffering will instantly vanish. Let go and reach 100% allowing. Your suffering will instantly vanish. The day we discover how to be 100% free from suffering in our minds and bodies, we have learned something that money cannot buy. We will see that we are the masters of our lives and have the power to transcend any negativity that arises. Many of us are so used to suffering that we have grown accustomed to having some kind of mental or emotional battle going on a majority of the time in our internal world. We're so used to it that we we, we will have always have some kind of mental or emotional battle going on a majority of the time in our internal world. Now, we may be driving, watching TV, or talking with a friend, and all sorts of anxiety, restlessness, or resistance to certain thoughts, feelings, shows up. The fast-paced mind can be so wrapped up and immersed in the river of thoughts that it's not only aware of the following divine experience that is available in each new moment. 
It's good to know that the ego, which is our limited identity, the ego, your limited identity, exists only because of years of resistance, control, and an internal battle with what is. Years of resistance, control, and an internal battle with what is. When we fight with existence, we create a separation from this life. The ego then becomes a master at forming judgments, overexerting, feeling desperate, or deeply hoping that something in this life needs to change. The ego does not know how to allow only your heart and soul can do that for you. The ego is a pro at perpetuating insecurity for you. It creates these subtle good and bad feelings in the background of your consciousness, constantly making positive or negative judgments when you look in the mirror. Is never 100% sure or doubt-free about anything and always has random complaints about the most trivial things that have nothing to do with whatever is happening. It is these small, frequent, unconscious inner battles that pass by so quickly and yet painfully that build up to creating a perpetual illusion of separation from source. A perpetual illusion of separation from source. What's the only illusion? Separation. As long as we allow them to fly on by with awareness, they will surely dissipate, and the painful delusions they've created will become healed. Now, of course, the divine purpose, why we need this annoying ego experience, is to entice us to believe we are separate from the God source to entice us to believe that we are separate from the God source. There's that illusion again, separate. Just so that our journey home is that much more enjoyable and fulfilling. The key to enlightenment is about an exponential increase of awareness. It's about consciously bringing the blazing light of our own pure consciousness into all that is dark, desperate, and hidden inside the deepest depths of our unconscious and subconscious minds. Only through going deep inside ourselves can we blind the darkness with pure awareness and shift that which was painful to something creatively pleasurable. The mind is the only tool we've got to peer into the depths of our unconscious. The only problem is that we cannot ever 100% fix the mind with the mind. So we must choose to transcend the ego mind completely if we are actually going to find true peace and freedom. In other words, leave the mind alone. Stay in the now through the breath it's very important to know that this ego is not some small anthill to step over and overcome it is more like a real slippery and sometimes gooey mount everest unless of course you've already had many lifetimes practicing the secrets to meditation And yes, the ego is quite the untamed beast because each time you identify with any thought, idea, or opinion about anything, 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 you become more attached to and identified with your ego. The more you do this, the more you are agreeing to identify with some particular form of reality and thus creating a subtle argument with all that is. Any identification with your thoughts, 
as if they are real, will always be creating more challenge, ego, and unconsciousness. Over-identification becomes like a cloud, hiding the bright, shining, divine being that you are from fully presenting its brilliant nature. When you buy into your thoughts as being real, you are creating a future experience of suffering because you're not honoring yourself as the unbounded, unlimited, divine, sacred expression of this infinite universe. You forget that you are an infinite being. The good news is that the all-intelligent, conscious, loving universe is truly the most forgiving teacher of all. It will be giving you a new chance and opportunity in every moment. A new chance and opportunity. New chance and opportunity in every moment to find your true source and self again and again and again. And you don't just get one more chance to get it right. You get a chance every moment you are alive. Please don't take advantage of this by allowing for procrastination to run your life over. You might try thinking about enlightenment like this. Imagine you're in a great museum that is burning down. Even though there is the most amazing art to look at, you don't want to get, you don't care to get distracted and hooked into some masterpiece on your way to find the exit door. Sure, the mind will bring in many ideas, like perhaps the desire to grab the Mona Lisa painting off the wall on your way out. Yet, the more that your feelings and desires take over you, you stop allowing for them to be what they are and get mesmerized admiring a gorgeous painting on the wall. Your ego is already programmed and filled with all the desires you could ever imagine. Your job is to find the you who is free from all desire and is already the source of love, bliss, and freedom within. This universe provides us with the experience of an ego for one special reason, so that we are given the opportunity to let it go and have a deeper spiritual connection to this life. The ego is not meant to accept appreciate, allow for, or agree with what is happening in your inner or outer world. That would instantly destroy its very illusion of separation. The moment we begin allowing for our internal experience to be whatever it is in each moment, the pent-up controlling ego program has to unravel itself and start leaving your DNA. The moment you begin for your internal experience to be whatever it is in each moment, the pent-up controlling ego program has to unravel itself and start leaving your DNA. Whatever contracted feelings that are showing up in your body, stop resisting them and just allow for them to pass through. You'll notice the moment your ego surrenders to something much bigger than itself. Your experience of suffering ends instantly. As you explore the deeper enlightening realms of the power of allowing, you'll see that it is very important that you understand what creates a healthy and unhealthy allowaholic. First, by choosing to become an allowaholic, You are not becoming a dead doormat for life to tromp all over you. Instead, you are choosing to play the game of being the master of your mind and your life. If you feel that an unjust action is being done, you can choose to watch your ego react to it. 
inform its personal opinion and judgment. You then have the three choices, right? Three choices. You can buy into this viewpoint and believe it is reality. Or you can sit back and watch this thought come and go until it subsides. You can also jump on this idea and take massive inspired action on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, of course, the fourth choice would be resist all of the above and remain stuck in the ever-controlling ego program. Yet, this is not the divine practice of a true allowaholic. Your main job as a master of allowing is to let all three of these possible responses to be present and listen to the deeper divine message within you. There is always a higher source of intelligence guiding our every experience of life from within. When we truly are listening to the still small voice from within, our ego has no power over our choices and has to get out of the way. Our passionate, vibrant, all-powerful souls are then living through us, speaking through our voice and moving our bodies without us having to do a thing. We basically get to sit back and enjoy the ride into manifest manifesting absolute success on every level. This is one of the perks from being a healthy alohaholic. The ego is no longer navigating the ship. As your highest self and soul's consciousness has taken the wheel and is peacefully in charge. As you'll soon realize, practicing the art of allowing can be very tricky because for it because it forces us to be in touch with our higher self 24-7. So we must choose to trust ourselves 100%, 100% of the time to know when to respond with words or physical action and when to just breathe and practice allowing the ego's internal dialogue to rise and fall. It helps to know that there are no mistakes in this life and there is always a right time and place for everything. If perhaps we over allow by letting a great opportunity pass on by, we will miss out on some amazing new adventure in that moment of our lives. Yet there will always be another one coming our way. Life always gives us a second, third, an infinite number of chances to get it right and become the allowing master of our existence. The greatest secret we've found to becoming a master alcoholic is that the more you practice allowing, the more time you allow yourself to relax deeper inside your being. As this occurs, you start trusting yourself on the most intimate levels, and life just gets easier, easier and easier for you. With deep trust and relaxation as your main operating software, inspired actions will move spontaneously through you. And you'll be super energized from allowing any negativity to rise and fall away. <clears throat> Excuse me. This, there is nothing that you cannot allow to happen in this world. There is nothing that you cannot allow to happen in this world. It is the ultimate conscious, effortless place to be, and yet has nothing to do with being lazy. As you allow and relax deeper, you see how the judgmental, limiting mind drops away, and you see the true infinite spiritual game we are all playing. Here's a few hints that will help you to become a master this week. 
Whenever you are feeling pulled in one direction and your mind is still unsure, hesitating and unable to take a massive action, try this. Simply allow your body to do whatever it wants to do. For example, you may be at your best friend's wedding and suddenly feel like lying down in the middle of the reception and meditating. Lie down and go into the experience fully. Let the body guide you all the way through the resistance, and you'll see the spark of conscious joy ignite inside you. Perhaps you are allowing for each experience to move through your body, and you find you've reached the bottom of your experience where you feel completely stuck. Go into it fully. Allow for total stuckness. This is where you become an unstoppable source of surrender and divine inspiration has to rise, take over you. You don't have to develop any new gifts or talents to become a master of yourself. You don't have to develop any new gifts or talents to become a master of yourself. It's more about allowing yourself to grow with each new experience that arises so that the pure joy, excitement, and zest for this life can reveal itself fully. Sometimes the mind may doubt if you should start taking inspired action on some fantastic idea that just showed up or just let it momentarily pass on by without taking action on it. Remember, a master allowaholic is not making decisions from the head. He or she is breathing into each experience, all allowing the deepest essence of the soul to be the guide. Now, if perhaps you are feeling overwhelmed with a decision, a problem, a negative memory that won't seem to go away, Realize that you are overthinking and the ego is attempting to be in control. It's, it's a re if perhaps you are feeling overwhelmed with a decision, a problem, or negative memory that won't seem to go away, then realize that you are overthinking and the ego is attempting to be in control. Try allowing yourself to be in 100% resistance, 100% resistance of all decisions. Be total in your experience of it. Fast forward this experience for 10 years, imagining that it'd be like to be resistant for that long. You'll see that as you stop trying to suppress or push any decision away, you start allowing the decision to form on its own accord and let go of all this extra thinking about how things should or shouldn't be. Perhaps the most magical allowholic formula of all comes out of knowing that whatever you resist will persist. If you simply stop resisting everything and allow that one unacceptable thought or feeling to rise and be intimately experienced at its core, it will fall away and cannot come back the same. Be aware that the mind is a master at making something simple into an overly complex, knotted mess. For example, the mind can get entangled in itself to the point that you may need to persist at allowing yourself to allow for a state of persistence. Let go of this nonsense and totally allow every experience to be as it is. With practice, you will suddenly find you have stopped fighting, controlling, and micromanaging your mind. Instead, your life becomes this ever-flowing river of juicy, rich life experiences, which is what it was truly meant to be. It is our natural state of being. 
One of the greatest byproducts of becoming a Lawaholic is you begin experiencing and knowing yourself as a vast, conscious, spacious energy. You stop identifying with thoughts to such a degree that you drop into the true self deeper inside. This creates such a powerful, peaceful feeling in your body that it may seem that turning into an allowaholic might turn into some globally addicting phenomenon. Every moment you are choosing to be an allowaholic, you are creating a healing feeling of spaciousness within your being. Vast, empty, loving space is the best container to unravel oneself and let in profound healing. You'll find in time that as you master the state of allowing, each experience of life will rise from and fall away, leaving in its wake a super neutral yet ecstatic feeling of absolute beingness. You slip out of samsara and into nirvana. <clears throat> Excuse me, you start being the divine observer of the entire universe where you can see how you always were at the center of your life. You no longer become easily caught in the mind, wrapped up in the periphery of life's dramatic and fanatical stories. Instead, you find that you can retain a more centered, loving, and peaceful approach to this wild, earthly existence all day long. We found that the biggest truth in observing life is that ultimately there is no such thing as being a passive observer of your life. You are always impacting life with your consciousness. By simply watching something, anything, your thoughts are always, always affecting and interacting with the atoms of that which you are looking at. There are, mul there are, are a multitude of scientific studies which have proven this. Quantum physicists have proven repeatedly that wherever the observer places his or her attention, the quark atoms and electrons instantly, instantly, and magically show up and gather in that one specific area. Quantum physicists have proven repeatedly that when wherever the observer places his or her attention, the quarks, atoms, and electrons instantly and magically show up and gather in that one specific area. It takes an enormous amount of energy to transform our outer world to see how we think it ought to be, and yet once we take a tiny step back and start observing the cosmic picture of it all, we may discover that we might not necessarily want to change anything. We may find the enlightening perspective that everything, everyone, and every experience on this earth is totally divine, synchronistic, and perfect just the way it is. Sure, your ego will not always agree with this, or how things should show up for your own highest good here on planet earth. Yet, this is the job of the ego who thinks it can fight, argue, mold, and manipulate reality in order to get what it thinks will make it happier. The more we practice allowing, the easier it becomes to transcend this slippery ego and discover a deep state of intense happiness inside of us. A profound sweet happiness simply arises from choosing to be at peace with what is. By totally allowing everything to be exactly as it is, happiness finds you. While your ego may not understand or want to participate in this definition of happiness, just experiment this week with entertaining the feeling of allowing everything to be as it is. 
As you allow for each and every experience to arise and fall all week long, take note how good your body feels as a reaction to this experiment. So like always, for the next six, seven, six, seven days, you have the grand opportunity to become a full-blown allowaholic. Your main job, of course, is to practice allowing for whatever happens to happen, just the way it happens. As you commit to finding what it takes to become a master allower, you'll want to notice where in your life you have a hard, have a hardest time letting go of control. Who is it that you cannot allow to be just the way they are? Take the closest look at your personal relationships and how you relate to your body, family, friends, lover, mate, your mind, your things, clothes, time, schedule, or perhaps even other people's agendas in this life. When you've gathered an impression Write out a physical list of all the beliefs you have that are causing you suffering. As you write them down, practice stepping back from the idea of trying to control, fix, or change it within you. See that it is just a thought you've identified with. Just let your issues relax onto the paper and allow any contracted experience forming in your body to have the divine space to be just the way it is. Whenever the feeling of lightness, stiffness, contraction, or suffering shows up inside, imagine turning up your allow wave, your allow valve, and increase the trusting, allowing feeling throughout your body. Give all your judgments and contractions 1,000% more space for it to have whatever experience it needs to have. Whenever something happens that upsets you, such as someone disagrees with you or does something contrary to what was promised, simply say to yourself, I allow this experience to be exactly as it is. Simply say to yourself, I allow this experience to be exactly as it is. Even if your ego thinks an experience is totally unacceptable, and it feels very hard for you to uh, allow for this one certain person, comment, or experience to exist. Try stepping back into a vast outer space and saying your magic allowing statement. Whatever the experience is, there is room in this infinite universe to allow for it. You may be pleasantly surprised how the judgmental mind subside, and you can feel this spaciousness inside you, and how connected you can become to the God source in any outrageous experience. With practice, you will notice that the levels of divine love, inner peace, and universal support that we experience on our inner world effortlessly manifest itself into our outer world and ah yes they are the same world so enjoy and if you will go to the place where you're not going to be interrupted and I'm sure that we all are and they're always the very first thing whenever 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 is to relax the body we relax the body through the breath now, we've all tried different ways to relax our body. Many different kinds of ways. It lasts a while. And sometimes it's fun. But it doesn't stay that way. The only way we permanently relax the body and get, get into the habit of keeping the body relaxed is through the breath. That's why we have it. keeps the body flowing and functioning, right? It keeps the body relaxed. Mm -hmm. 
So you easy and slowly in through the nose and easy and slowly out through the mouth. No hurry. As we do this, you will notice that the body, once you put your attention on the body through the breath, your shoulders will drop. It's amazing how many people crunch their shoulders. They aren't, they're so used to doing it, they don't know it. They stress. And we don't know it. We, we don't pay attention to it. We're so busy with the outside world and the ego mind. So the body absorbs your thoughts through the ego mind. Worry, stress, fear, anxiety, right? Hatred, anger, greed, dishonesty, manipulation, deception. It, and it, it, where do you think it goes? The body. And so the body, anywhere in the, in, on, around the body, you know, it could, you, you could store your stress and different places you can store your stress in your fingers believe it or not and over the years through the years some of us that part of the body breaks down bone starts eroding disintegrating start having inflammation pain arthritis all of these this e this This is what happens to our body. Now, we don't correlate that. We don't say, you know, I, I'm, I'm feeling this way. Why am I feeling this way? You know, what's it about? Because I feel anxiety. I feel pressure. I feel stress, tension. Why am I feeling this way? Let's look at it. Embrace it. And so when we do this, we, you know, we practice as much as we can to get in the habit of doing it. And then we, we understand that, you know, the body's going to absorb it. Stress is the number one destroyer of these bodies on the planet. By far. So does it make sense that we identify that and understand what it's about? So the body begins to decompress because you're no longer running from any of the issues that the ego mind conjures up, right? All these illusions and you you just let them be. You, you let them go pass right through you. You sit down, interact with them. If there's no issues with any of your interaction. And then what happens is you, begin, you start to realize none of this, none of it, is real. It is all an illusion. And so then you say, well, then why would I go out there when I can be in here? I've already gone out there. I don't, I've lost track of how many lifetimes I've been out there. I know what being out there is. Th that's something that I created for my entertainment. That isn't something that is real. It's something I experience, right? But when I decide to go within this body, I under started understanding the body and how the ego mind works how the subconscious, unconscious works simply, not 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 convoluted and in, in, in confusing and complicated. See, because we inherit these, we inherit when we go into these bodies, we inherit that stuff. 
And what it does is, is that since we have amnesia, we experience through our troubles and interaction with ourselves. And then we get to the point where we start realizing that this is all an illusion, that the supreme reality is within me. And all of this, all of it, for every one of us, is temporary. So you, you're focused on your breath, the, the, the body begins to let loose, it decompresses. And you're in the now. You are in the now. Moment to moment, breath to breath, period. You'll notice some things, right? Feel. I should say feel. You'll feel really no stress, no compression, no irritability, no anxiety. You won't feel suffering. You have left these illusions alone. You are not granularly, granularly, deeply into them, interacting with them. Each of us put out over 60,000 thoughts a day. That's quite a bit of, that's quite a bit of thoughts, right? We practice mastering our thoughts. Most of us don't. So we get these little surprises on and off. And it is so crucial for us to start understanding if we, some of us to certain extents do already, others are just beginning. Whatever we focus on, and this is proven over and over again, whatever you focus on, you're creative. Period. Now, might, you might be looking at some of it, but it does, well, what am I creating? It doesn't look like I'm creating anything creating. It is creating. A hundred percent of the time. See, we don't embrace that. We don't really know that. We don't accept it through the ego mind, do we? You know, we say, in, in the ego mind, because of the illusion, right? We say, well, how can that be, right? I'm going to look at something, and I'm going to start changing the molecular structure of it. I'm going to start changing the quantum quark, the atoms. They're all going to start gathering together because of my focus on whatever it is I'm focused on, whatever my intent is. That's why Buddha always said, be mindful of your thoughts. Master your thoughts. Yeah, we've all heard, haven't we heard this many times through life? Be careful for what you wish for, you just might get it, whether it's good or bad. Then you begin to see, we begin to realize that that out there is just the illusion of entertainment. That's all it is. That's what it is. It's an experience. And we experience different things. And that's why we created it, to experience it. Everything that we do is an experience, and we're creating the experience to experience. Now, you're not mindful of your thoughts. You have mastered your thoughts. Then you're not. You're probably not going to believe that because you're going to think there's something else, right? That's outside of you. That is doing that to you. Okay, not for you, but to you. Then you see, this is when we talk about confidence, right? Confidence in ourselves through the heart, mind, not the ego mind. And trust in ourselves and the universe. So we intend something, 
clearly, concisively, we know it will manifest. And we don't care about the time. It's not what time, um, when, um, how, where, because we know it's being manifested. That's it, period. And we leave it alone. Maybe visit it once in a while. It is, it, it is absolutely paramount for all of us to decide on our own, choose, to be gentle, kind, and generous with ourselves and humble at all times. To be in the highest of the highest high, the deepest of the deepest, deepest, the purest of the purest, purest, eternal love, gratitude, and peace. So you might get, you might get you know, flustered, right? Something might set you off. Could be anything. Could be something trivial, insignificant, sets you off, and then you're in a downward spiral, and everything starts to, you know, go awry. And the reason it's doing that is because of you and what thoughts you're putting out. Boom. That's it. It's like, you know, have you ever done this to yourself or had other people tell you? I, that, that they're so glad that that day is over because it was one heck of a day. It was really challenging and, and a distraught. And they, they never want to have a day like that again. They created that day. They did it. That's how powerful the beings they are inside the body. They created it. And all of us do that. Do you, do you believe that we are the only species, the only civilization that has the ego mind challenge? There's a few that don't, but not many. Pleiadians, Syrians, Arcturians, Andromedans, Felines, Ada Reticuli, Anunnaki, Nords, Greys, Draco, Reptilians. Golden Pyramid Avion. I mean, anyone, any place, anything that you can think, right? Any species, any civilization. The Galactics, the Celestials, Offworlders, Archangels. Really, you th- you don't think they they don't have? <clears throat> you don't think that they don't have ego mind issues? They do. And it's really interesting because, see, all of us, in some way, shape, or form, have a kind of amnesia. Different forms, different different ways, different depths, but we all do, see? Do you think the angels know exactly where they begin? Or do they follow something? Because they believe in what they're following. You when when you hear stories about the angels, you know. That these these blown out proportion stories where they say the angels hated man and you know all this doom and gloom and stuff. They were jealous of man. Okay? What do you think that is? That's evil mind. Why are there galactic wars? Why why in so many universes conflict ego? Mind, subconscious mind, unconscious mind, all of it. Interesting, do you think like the fairies and the sprites, the elves and gnomes, the dwarves, the trees, the trolls? The elementals, earth, air, water, fire, ether. 
mermaid, the dolphin, the whale, the pegasus, the unicorn, the centaur, the minotaur? Do you, you, do you think that they may have a god within a physical form? That they have little amnesia and that they have ego mind issues? It's interesting because that's that's about as blunt as you can be across the board, across existence and beyond. Does question to ponder for yourselves? Does pure consciousness have ego? Ah. What do you think causes us, right? None of us are exempt from it, to wander off into the past or the future. To want to know things, right? This is why we take the three paths, you know, we, we, we're in the now, right? And, and then we float off into other thoughts. And we've got all these program thoughts, tens of millions and billions of them that fly by like clouds in the skies, which aren't even ours. And we have all that mind chatter and everything. And all that doesn't exist in the now. And it's really, isn't, it, isn't it interesting that 98, give or take, percent of us is out there. It's out there in the illusion, the entertainment. 2% of us is within. This is how we spend our time. Why do you think we have thousands of lifetimes and we end up doing the same thing? 98% out there, 2% within. And the ego mind is the master. We are, mani- we're, we are manifesting the liberation of this planet. And t- the ego mind will tell you, you're insignificant, you're tiny, you're small, you're powerless, you can't do any of that. Okay? That's what the ego mind will convince you of. And it's real good at it. Day. But through the harbine, you will know that you're a significant part in the transcendence of this planet into higher vibrational frequencies. You, you'll know it. I mean, we, we create... Every second, every microsecond, we're creating. We don't stop. There's no break. We're always creating. The life that you currently have right now, right in this very moment, you created. Now understand, when when we're tricked by the ego mind to be in the future or the past all the time, what do you think happens? We suffer. That's what happens. In the now, we don't suffer. In the future, in the past, we suffer. That's why we always are this 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 force that keeps pulling us, right? It keeps saying, "You you you got to do this. You you got to do this this and this. You you can't just sit and do not. You've got to go here. You got to go here. You've got bills. You've got this. You've got that. You've got stresses, anxieties, fears, worries, and and because 
we haven't learned yet to stay out of the ego mind by focusing on our breath and moving into the now and staying in the now and moving within our inner journey. We haven't learned to do that. It's not that we're incapable of it. Quite the contrary. It's just that the majority of us haven't done that. It's like when people say, I'm going to have a good life, right? It's great intent, right? But then the ego mind, you know, this isn't good enough. You're going to have to have this. You've got to have that. This isn't good enough. This, I, I, you know, I, I, then, they, then people say they aren't good enough or, you know, they, they've got to better themselves or they, you know, they don't like their looks and they've got to change that and maybe that'll make them happy and then, and then, well, they don't have enough money, and then when they get enough money, that's not enough money, so they need more money. It, it's, it's, a, it's a circle jerk. It's just it's a merry-go-round. And you know what's interesting? If you look at a merry-go-round, and it's going real fast. Remember as a kid, you'd get it going real fast, and so you get a little dizzy, and you get it going round, 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 and then you wouldn't step off of it. Most of the time you wouldn't step off because it's going so fast. Kind of like the ego mind. Okay. And this is what's interesting. Each of us, each of us are the center of the universe. And each of us are the universe. Each of us are the Buddhas, the Maitreyas, the Lao Tzu's. We, each of us are, and all of us are. We're everything and anything and nothing. You are the sacredness of space. And we're not talking about the body. The body is temporary. We're talking about the God that you are within that body, which is infinite. It never ends. You take on forms, you experience those forms, and you move on. And that's what we do. We experience things. You imagine what it'd be like if there was nothing to experience? Nothing, zero. Complete void, nothing. So we experience. And we may just along the way in this life discover cannot take this life so seriously. To embrace every moment that you're in that body to embrace it to stay in gratitude to stay in deep eternal love and peace with oneself exactly the way you are in this very moment to be spiritually awake means you are fully present to this eternal celebration of life in each moment. There is no judgment about good or bad or right, wrong. We are simply in a state of awe and gratitude for what is. This is completely effortless past. Yet even effortless is too much a word to truly discover it. Go about your day even more freely, lightly, and effortlessly than you ever have in your entire life. Make celebration of existence the number one commitment throughout the day. 
I'll join you in the meditation, and I'll return to close this out.
deep breath slowly in through the nose and an easy and slow breath out the mouth. Be still. Who you think you are is just a concept and is not even close to the amazing multidimensional being that you really are. Look into a mirror for about five minutes today. Stare into the black holes in your eyes. Let yourself disappear in the emptiness. This isn't about judgment, how you look, or anything. Into the black holes of your eyes. Stay for 30 seconds, seconds at least in one state of mind. Keep breathing and noticing who is the creative witnesser behind your eyes. Observe what conscious spiritual energy is present. Lose yourself in the, this experience. Let yourself dissolve into the experiencer who is having the experience. Take this with you for the rest of the day and to the evening and night and the following morning. And we will return here tonight at 9 p.m. with a reverse aging health call. And Saturday, July 9th, 2022, 3 p.m. Eastern, to continue our global guided meditation call.